Hello everybody, it's Craig Maynard again and today we're going to be talking about how to make a mechanical object and put it on the end of our robot. We're going to create a mechanical device. In this case it's going to be a gripper. So we can open and close the gripper, pick up objects. Well to do that we're going to have to start with a brand new robot. Let's, we can add this onto your existing robot but in our case we're going to we're going to start from scratch for this demonstration. We're going to bring up an IRB 140, 6 kilogram. We're going to create a new one, make a new solution, and give, the, give it a second for the whole thing to boot up. It'll eventually ask you which, uh, which library to use. I simply use the top library. And there's our robot. All right, well, next thing we want to do is we want to bring in the uh, gripper components. So first thing I think I'll do is take the robot. I'm just going to make it invisible. We don't need to see it right now. We just need to know that it's running, and it's running. So in courseware I put in a couple of gripper parts so if you go import geometry and browse for geometry and then slide on down to where it says SC gripper body and SC gripper finger let's bring in those two components now the finger is exactly the same as the body as the other finger so we have one finger loaded in here let's load in a second finger because we're gonna need two browse for geometry we'll go back and SC gripper finger Right, like that, and now we can see the second finger is loaded in. Uh, let's take the first finger, finger, and we'll just rename that finger left. And the second finger, we're going to rename that one finger right. All right, the. Uh, the parts are all there right now. They're kind of in a goofy uh, orientation, so we can fix that up. We'll just select all the parts, right click on it. We're going to go to position, rotate, and we want to rotate this around the red axis uh, by 90 degrees. So the rotation will be minus 90 degrees, and uh, around the red axis, we'll apply that. That looks good. So now the the object is standing up. Let's take the same group and we're going to maybe offset the positions so it's a little bit higher. Well probably the easiest way to do this rather than offset positions is just use single point placement. So we're going to place one point. I'm going to choose surface and center and we're going to swing it around to get a view of the bottom. There we go. So our primary point surface and center should be right in the middle of the bottom of the uh, assembly and the secondary point where it's going to will be zero 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 that's the origin so if I apply it now it looks like looks like it's sitting nicely right there good now let's close that up and let's clean up our fingers we have two fingers on here so I'm going to just I'm just going to uh, make this left finger invisible and we'll focus on the right finger right now. So I'm going to take that finger, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. So it's facing the right direction. Oh, that's on the wrong axis. Let's try that again. But this time we want to rotate it on the blue axis, the Z axis. There we go. And we want to take the same finger and just offset it. offset the position of the finger and let's just say we'll move it one at a time one millimeter at a time and I'd like to kind of move it until it lines up with the the vertical Z axis so I've got a little bit too far there so let's bring it back and uh, now it looks good so that's how we want the left finger to look all right Oh, I guess that's the right finger. So let's make that one invisible and we'll bring in the left finger. We'll just make it visible again. And this orientation looks good but it seems to be uh, in need of offsetting as well. So I'm going to move it one millimeter at a time back and forth until it lines up with the, uh, the vertical axis, the Z axis. And that looks beautiful. Okay, now let's just make both of those 
visible. So now we have the gripper and it's in a closed condition. All right, now the next thing we need to do is we have to take these grippers and make a mechanism out of them so these uh, fingers can slide back and forth on the main gripper body. To make a mechanism, we're going to go to Modeling, Create Mechanism, and um, give it a unique name, Gripper underscore Mechanism. The mechanism type isn't a robot, it's an external axis. It's an axis because it's going to be moving back and forth. That's good. Okay, now let's go to the links. We're going to select links and we're going to create the first link in it. And the first link is going to be the gripper body itself. The gripper body, and that's going to be my base link. So it's the base link, gripper body, link one. We'll move it into added components apply that. The second link we want to have is going to be the left finger. Okay, and we'll just add that in. Apply it. And the third link we want to have is the right finger. And we'll add that one in and apply it. And now we can just cancel. We don't need any more links. So you see over here we have the base and in its body when you have link 2 tied to the left finger and link 3 tied to the right finger. Great. And now how are these links going to behave on this gripper assembly? Well that's that's determined by the joints. So let's have a look at the joints. Set those up. We're going to start with the first joint which is going to be joint 1. It's not a rotational joint but a prismatic joint. And the child link of joint 1 is going to be, uh, well the, the parent link is link 1 which is the base. The child link is link 2 and it will be an active link. And now we have to play around with the uh, the position of it. Now I'm gonna, this may take some playing around but we're going to define what the range of motion of this gripper is going to be. So we want the minimum to be 0 millimeters and the maximum to be around I found about 18 for my gripper. And If I type those in and I move this back and forth you see it's actually moving in the wrong direction. So 0 to 18 may not, may not be a good idea. Perhaps my second position should be minus 18. Now we move it again and we see that this joint moves very nicely on the gripper between 0 and 18. Between 0 and 18. So it's a prismatic joint, minus 18, 0, 0. Axis direction, minus 18, 0, 0 and the joint limits are from 0 to 18 millimeters. We'll just apply that. Now the joint 2 would be the other finger. Uh, the parent link of this joint is not the other finger, it's actually the base link. So make sure you put the base link or you're going to find the two fingers move together instead of individually. Again it's prismatic and again the position is about, in my case, 18 millimeters. Uh, the minimum would be zero, the maximum would be a distance of 18 in, in this direction. And we get a little jog axis to play with. Oh, and that's working great. So we can see this one's working just fine as well. So now the gripper fingers work. And now we have the two joints, uh, joint one, where L1 is a parent and L2 is the child, and joint two, where L1 is the parent, link one, and link three is the child. So we have the two joints set up. All right, now we want to take this uh, gripper assembly and we want to turn it into a into a tool. So to do that, I'm just going to line this thing up on the on this face as best I can. That should be good. And we're going to go over here and we're going to choose the tool mechanism. We're going to bring in a tool mechanism. Now we click on tool data, and it gives it my gripper mech one as the tool data name. That sounds fine and it belongs to, well we're going to assign the base link as the the tool itself, not the fingers, we'll use the base link. Now it wants to know where the tool center point is, so uh, we want it up the blue axis a ways, so let's just raise up the tool center point from 0, 0, 0 to a point somewhat in the middle of the gripper fingers. So where are we doing so far? 
All right, that looks like it's quite close to the middle. You can put your tool center point where you think is appropriate. I'm going to leave mine at 40, the center of the gripper. Um, we don't know the mass, so we'll leave it at, at one kilogram. We don't know the center of gravity, so I'll just choose one, one, one. Of course, you might want to um, you might want to actually be more specific with your gripper to make it more accurate in simulation. But in my case, I'll just leave it like that, and we'll click on OK. And now we have our tool setup, our joint setup, our link setup. Everything looks good. We can. We can minimize those. Everything's ready to go. So now we're going to compile the mechanism. And in the, when we compile it, we're going to set up a couple of poses for this thing. OK. So let's add a pose in. And we're going to call this first pose, well, we call it um, the open pose. Right, let's, no, let's, let's call it the po closed pose. We'll call it closed gripper and we'll make it the home pose. So of course now I can change the pose to be whatever I want it to be. I can change the grippers to whatever I want, but I'd like to have them closed like that. And we'll apply that. And the home pose is now set. Now let's make another pose. We'll call it open gripper. And uh, you can't select home pose because we only get one. And we'll select that Joint, the joint values to be 18 and 18, so it's fully open. And we'll just apply that. And now we'll cancel. We have home pose and we have open pose. Home pose and open pose. And that looks great. So now we have, uh, we have our tool pretty much finished. So we're going to close that. And there's our tool. All waiting. And if you look over at the, if you go to layout, you can see my gripper mechanism is now showing up as a tool. So let's take that tool and let's drag it onto the end of our robot. You want to update the position? You say, yes, I do. Now, if I was to actually go there and uh, examine, there's my gripper floating in space. But it's not really floating in space. It's sticking on the end of an invisible robot. So we'll make that robot visible again. And there's my gripper, all ready, ready to be put to work. All right. Now, next thing we have to do is we have to set up some digital outputs. And, and, and uh, these digital outputs can then be used to control actions on the gripper. OK, now to set up the digital outputs, we're going to go to, uh, I believe it's controller. And we're going to go to configuration editor, input output system. And we're going to create some new signals. These are signals uh, that haven't been there before. They're brand new. So we're going to make a new signal. And we're going to call it digital 10 underscore 2. And what kind of a signal is this? It's going to be a digital output. And we want to make the access level all. All right. We'll just click on OK. Now it's warning us here that the changes won't take place until the controller is restarted. So we'll say, OK. And now let's restart the controller. So we'll go to simulation, uh, controller, I should say. Go to controller and click on restart. We'll just do a reset rapid. And we'll give it a couple seconds to reboot. It doesn't take too long. It's almost done. OK, and it's rebooted. All right, well, we've set up the digital signals. Now we have to set up some actions to happen with these digital signals. So when the digital signal is turned on, we want to have the gripper open and close. All right, well, to do that, we're going to go to simulation, and we're going to go to con configuration and bring up what's called the event manager. An event manager manages all the events that happen when certain digital signals occur. So we're going to add a new event in here. We're going to add a IO signals changed event. That's that's good. Which one? Well, digital 10-2. And what do we want it to change it to? 
Well, let's work. Let's say what happens when the digital signal is true. So when the digital signal is one, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is we want to move mechanism to oppose. Next, it's going to ask us which mechanism? Well, my gripper mechanism. And which pose? Let's say open gripper. And we finish it. And now we have created a, uh, a signal that's going to make a gripper open. Now we have to make another one for closed. So uh, IO signal changed again. Same signal, but this time when the signal is false. You got next. And the action type would be to move a mechanism to oppose. Next. And which mechanism? My gripper. And which pose? That would be the home position, the close position. So we'll say finish. And we should be done. Now we can put our event manager down. We'll close the event manager and see if we have any luck with our, our gripper. So we have to look at our I.O. signals now. So let's bring up the I.O. simulator. And we want to look at the IRB 140 signals, specifically the digital outputs. And there's the one that we created. And if we click on digital output 10, hopefully something's going to happen to our gripper. So when digital output 10-2 is 1, the gripper's open, gripper's closed. Gripper's open, gripper's closed. So now we have a working gripper. And as part of our robot, we can go home. We can uh, we can move our gripper around. We can uh, open and close the gripper. And we're now set to um, we're now set to move our robot into whatever position we want to have to get the job done. All right. So this little video here showed you guys how to create a gripper and how to make the gripper open and close with the digital input from the robot. So try this out yourself and on your own gripper and see if you can get that gripper to pick up, well, to move toward where the parts are going to be provided to the robot uh, for your clips.